Hey there, Sharon here. Did you know that there are 10,050 minutes between every weekly 30 minute lesson? Yep, so if you've got a student for 30 minutes every week, that means they have 10,050 minutes before they see you again in their lesson the following week. So, what does this mean for us as piano teachers? Well, it means that it's really important that as teachers, we consciously develop our students' self-evaluation skills because if we're telling them everything all the time, when they get home, they're gonna get stuck really super quick because we're just making them too dependent upon us in the lesson. So today, I'm sharing a resource with you that's designed to help your grade one to two or early elementary students to self-evaluate their sight reading with a really clear sense of purpose. Now, I designed this some time ago in collaboration with one of my students called Francesca. And at the time she was using the ABRSM sight reading trainer app. And although she was working her way through it, I became aware that you know what it's like the same problems just keep cropping up time and time and time again and I just wasn't res taking that responsibility to encourage Francesca to take her response for her to take responsibility for for herself between lessons I was just I was doing too much for her in the lesson frankly so you can see from this resource that there are six steps and the idea is that at home, your student is going to write the name or number of the sight reading piece into, into this blue box. And then they're going to set a timer for two minutes and do a little bit of prep work. So this means that they're going to be using strategies that you've given them, such as counting aloud, tapping the rhythm, identifying the shapes and the patterns, figuring out where their hands need to be, working out which finger goes in the first note, and so on. Okay, so that is our that is our job. We've got to be giving them the strategies. And then once the timer goes off, it's time for the student to video record themselves playing this piece of sight reading. Now, what I find with students is that they will actually be dissatisfied with the first couple of takes, okay? And they'll record the video again and again. And you might be saying, is this okay? Because, you know, it's a piece of sight reading. Well, here's the thing from my perspective. They're identifying the problems and then they're giving it another go with the intention of improving it. And in my book, that's absolutely fine because it means that they're actually thinking for themselves. They're actually practicing sight reading. They're working on it. And then the fourth stage is they're gonna go back and watch the video again. And then they complete this self-evaluation chart. So did they remember to count in aloud before starting to play? How accurate was the rhythm? By watching that video back, were they able to spot any hesitations? For notes, I mean, sometimes students are a bit oblivious to an incorrect note in a piece of sight reading, but I've got to say that I did find that by getting students to self-assess this, they're actually starting to increase their accuracy significantly. So again, this get them to work on it for a couple of minutes, get them to video record themselves, themselves and watch it back and then actually assess how well they did. It's a step in the right direction. It's again giving them responsibility for going, did I actually play, play the right notes? Did I remember the key signature? Again, with fingering, because there's a box here asking them to assess this element, they just have heightened awareness. They take responsibility. You know, so, okay, which finger did I need to start on? Did I need to, you know, turn in a thumb there? Did I, did I do that? Did I, was there any particular place where I realized, oh, I've run out of fingers? Okay, so, um, hand position. I mean, at this level, we're talking grade one to two level, Sight reading tends to be in the five finger position, so you've just got really the odd small stretch. Um, so this is really about getting students to have both hands ready before starting to play. Yeah, so that it's not a case of 
they've got one hand ready, good to go. So let's say the right hand starts and then the left hand comes in for the second part of the sight reading piece. But maybe the left hand is sitting on their lap and then once they realize, oh, it's the left hand playing and they go and work it out. So the idea is when I say hand position there, it's are your hands ready to go? Dynamics, I mean, what can I say? Again, it's something, it's a checkpoint on the self-assessment sheet and just simply because it's on the student's radar, they make this conscious effort to create those dynamic contrasts. And that's what I find, find with my student, Francesca. It was there as a tick box, so she was going through it and it was like, whoops, yeah, I forgot the dynamics. So she would go back and she'd record it again. And it was just, it was something that was suddenly, like I say, it was on her radar. She was thinking about it because it was a tick box. And of course, we all know that keeping going when it's sight reading is paramount. Sight reading can tend to be riddled with hesitations. The problem is it doesn't sound like a piece of music. So even if they don't rock the notes or the fingering, they learn to appreciate the importance of not stopping to play every single note as it should be with the correct finger. And again, that's why this tick box is actually here, because that that's what they want to be doing. They want to be assessing themselves and going, yeah, I did struggle a bit, but I kept going because that's a skill that they do obviously need to learn as sight readers. So last but certainly not for least, there's a box and students are going to then write one sentence, just one sentence about what it is they want to improve. And I know that when Francesca used this resource, this was actually a really helpful feature. Typically, she did a great job when reading the pitch direction, for example, but sometimes she moved by step rather than a skip and just highlighting that for her, writing a sentence and going, this is where I'm messing up. Um, it just enabled her to become more purposeful when then going and playing another piece of sight reading because, again, she knew consciously, this is what I want to get better at. And this second page of the resource, it can be copied multiple times, okay? You can pop these into a folder for students. Uh, they can use them a couple of times a week at home. And I find as well that because there's a bit of technology involved, in other words, they get to video record something, I find that students have really enjoyed this. And then of course you can get them to let you see some of their videos um, the following week and you can look at their self-evaluations and just kind of check that they're on par. And reflecting in video recorded performances, I mean, whether it's sight reading or repertoire pieces they're currently learning, it's just, it's such a powerful way to help them to develop their self-assessment skills. And it's a great way for, for us to encourage them to take responsibility for their own musical learning. So, I really hope that you enjoy uh, using this resource, Six Steps to Improving Sight Reading at Home. And I would just love to hear from you. I would just love to hear how you're getting on. So my personal email is Sharon at CuriousPiano.org and I really hope to find an email in my inbox from you really soon. So happy teaching and most of all, I hope that your students enjoy taking responsibility for themselves at home with regards to their sight reading. Okay, have a great day, happy teaching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.